So I wanted to uh, make a video <coughs> on how to clip uh, a sound effect uh, sampling uh, like of a gun shooting and so that you can use it in uh, Rogue Spear. Now assuming uh, we're talking about the, um, the full auto, uh, a recording of uh, full auto fire or even a three round burst. Now with the three round burst, um, we're going to zoom in here. First I'm going to share again the audio setup I'm using. So for host I have, and this is in the free program Audacity, which, oh, it's excellent because there used to be <clears throat> a little app in Windows called uh, Windows uh, Wave Recorder or Sound Recorder or something like that. and and it lets you edit WAV files. It didn't have a lot of features, but back in the day I made it work. <clears throat> and uh, I didn't have anything more complicated than that. But now I can't even find, you know, that's that's Windows for you. You know, you get an upgrade and it takes things away from you. Um, so, uh, like there, uh, like Windows Media Player. At one point, Windows Media Player would allow you to play a, a sound and speed it up or slow it down, but keep the same pitch so that you could take a, a song by any musical artist and you could speed it up or slow it down and their their singing voice would sound exactly the same. It wouldn't sound like the chipmunks if you sped it up. Or it wouldn't sound like someone who's on downers if you slowed it down, you know. Um, it was amazing. And then they, they took that away. Um, I, I took uh, 10,000 Maniacs uh, Peace Train, um, which was their version of the Yusuf Us Islam, I think is was his name, or Cat Stevens, um, his his song Peace Train. I took their version, and I sped it up, and then I called it uh, Peace Bullet Train. You know when peace can't get there soon enough, and uh, and then after that, like the next version of Windows, that that went away. It wasn't there anymore, and that's called an upgrade. So, anyway, on, uh, I'm I'm ranting, but so this program's called Audacity. It's free. Um, so an audio setup. I set host to Windows Wasapi playback device. I set uh, in my case to speakers, which are cheap Sennheiser USB headsets. Uh, a headset. Um, mine's like super cheap because I saw it. <clears throat> what the price is on even like a replacement for the last one I had uh, now that it's post COVID um, that was more than I wanted to spend um, though now I probably should have because on one of my web browsers I can't get the damn sound to play on Facebook and I've tried everything Sometimes it plays, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it doesn't, so it's annoying. A uh, recording device is also set to speakers, uh, Sennheiser USB headset, but in parentheses it says loopback. So um, whatever the speakers play, or whatever plays on the speakers, now gets recorded if I'm, if I'm using the record button. And then recording channels set that to mono because even if the source is a stereo recording and it sounds great in stereo you don't want stereo because your gun only has one barrel and and you want the sound to be centered on that one barrel of your gun you don't you know you, you don't have a stereophonic firearm in your hands um, you know, there's no balance switch on your pistol. So, <clears throat> you want that set to mono. And I don't know what the other audio settings are. I'm not sure that they're that important. Uh, 
So, um, right. So once you've clicked record while you're playing the source of your sound effect, then you you've captured it here. So now what do you do with it? Okay, well say say the gun needs a three round burst, but you didn't record a three round burst. That's okay. We can work with that. Um, so you click <coughs> um, at the beginning of the first of three rounds. Zoom in a bit. <coughs> and here that should be at a moment where you get an abrupt increase in volume in um, I don't know if the word might also be amplitude <coughs> and uh, one two three and it's easier to see if I zoom out a little one two three three shots so with a three round burst um, in Rogue Spear you want to uh, keep the trailing sound so uh, this is what it's going to sound like and I, I should probably do this instead just select some of it so that you can hear it <coughs> So that's a three round burst on this ridiculously, um, that, well, this modified Beretta um, type pistol uh, that I sh um, showed in uh, the other <coughs> uh, tutorial video I, I just made on um, how to set. <coughs> How to set your cyclic rate for your modified gun in Rogue Spear. Anyway, it's got a ridiculously fast cyclic rate. I could hear it even before I measured it. <coughs> and upon measuring it, I realized uh, or found out that it um, was firing at 1500 rounds per minute, which is like not, a, not even a Mac 10 fires that fast. So that's ridiculously fast and and it appeared to be so fast that it actually looked pretty damn stable um, as uh, Forgotten Weapons has pointed out there's like this point where like in a in a really slow full auto firearm you may f feel the recoil and then you get to a point where the cyclic cyclic rate is just right that it's it's very stable in firing and i think the beretta pm12s or m12s is at that point according to him and um and then then after that it starts speeding up and becoming more uncontrollable what well, it, it might be that if you speed up again get even faster up to 1500 rounds it becomes even more controllable I don't know but it looked pretty controllable in the video so <clears throat> anyway so this is a three round burst of 1500 rounds per minute and uh, now the trailing sound what do we do with that so my uh, that's something you might want to deal with um, at the beginning so you got to find out where you want to cut it off and uh, as quickly as it can bleed off it's probably for the better because um, sometimes it seems like if the the file doesn't play all of the way through then it picks up part way the next time it has to play or something it's just something you see happen sometimes in the game so while a, a nice long trailing sound that goes on for two or three seconds as you hear the bullet ripping through the air you know 1,000 meters downrange uh, it sounds great but it, it could result in a bad experience uh, in game um, so 
you'll have to play with that yourself and try to get a feel yourself where the best medium is because uh, the, lo the longer that trailing sound is, the m I think the higher the likelihood uh, it's going to result in some anomalous playback with succeeding shots. I don't know. You'll have to see for yourself. Anyway, so what we're doing right now is the trailing sound of the bullet ripping through the air or the reports are reverberating off of surfaces in the environment. We're checking that out to see where we can most properly end that. Now one thing we could do first before we do that is we've got all this well that's not really background noise so anyway let's listen to this see what it sounds like okay so that's definitely trailing sound of the gunshots so um, how long is that that's like uh, it's only about a second long, so that's not that long. So, um, so highlight this section, then go up to effect, and then to fading, and then fade out. And then what that does is it fa it it reduces the volume until it's nothing. So now we listen to it, and right about here it becomes inaudible so we'll just cut that off we don't want any extra time left yeah that's good okay so now that we've done that we can go back to the three round burst and we want that point where you get this uh, abrupt increase in amplitude. Now, you typically want, uh, unless maybe, or in my experience, you want the amplitude of these waveforms to be touching the top and bottom. You don't want them, uh, you don't want to increase the volume so much that, that a lot of your waveform is pushed beyond the top and bottom because then you get loss of data basically or loss of detail in your sound effect um, but rogue spear for some reason with the gun shooting sounds or, or at least black uh, I don't want to blame it on black ops version 2.0 so I'll, I'll bl blame it on the bl uh, the uh, the Blackthorn engine um, because it doesn't seem to do it to reloading sounds it only seems to do it to gunshot sounds um, so it makes me think that there's something in the game engine that's muffling gunshot sounds maybe they're trying to simulate the fact that the operators are wearing some kind of hearing protection I don't know man I don't know what's going on uh, it might have something to do with the fact you're taking a stereo source and you're boiling it down to a mono source so that you're losing um, volume but <clears throat> in audacity it sounds great but then when I import it into the game then it's like it gets muffled so and there's a way to adjust that but I'll, I'll cover that in another video Anyway, so this is now our three round burst, which sounds pretty cool. That, that, I mean, that, that's pretty badass. <laughs> that's a good sound effect. Because if you're in Rogue Spear and you're punching off these three round bursts with this cyclic rate at tangos you're gonna feel pretty mighty it's like get some of that
Now here's a caution, a word of caution. Because the AI in Rogue Spear aims for the head, <coughs> and because the AI in Rogue Spear continues, usually fires in full auto if the gun has a full auto mode, um, they will shoot in full auto, they will hold down the trigger in full auto until the very instant that their target dies or is incapacitated at least. In other words, falling to the ground. <clears throat> so what that usually means is that they just shoot one round in full auto. Somehow they're, they're, they're so quick on the trigger you know I mean it's it's robotic really because the human the human mind would have to see uh, the target falling discern that they're falling and then react to that and let the finger off the trigger and that that would take you know at least a couple of tenths of a second which could re result in another round, at least another round coming off in full auto. But that's not how it works in Rogue Spear. The AI is a computer. It's not a human being. So as the very instant that the target is inc incapacitated, it stops shooting at the head. So that means pretty much any bullet in Rogue Spear going through someone's head unless they have some pretty serious armoring which to be fair and truthful being shot in the head whatever helmet you're wearing is is not a pleasant experience uh, and it's often going to result in your being incapacitated anyway so that means most rounds that the tangos are firing at someone's head in full auto results in only one or two rounds being popped off. So that kind of sucks and uh, I'm gonna try to recommend or remedy that in Black Ops uh, or re I'm sorry uh, Black Bag uh, the weapons mod I'm working on. So because um, so that means you put all this work into these full auto sounds, but then the AI is so good that they never use full auto. So you've got these, uh, you've got this AI roaming around the map with like six or more magazines and they haven't even emptied one magazine yet because they're so uber that they're killing people with single taps and full auto, um, you know, it's just too elite. <laughs> it's, um, what's the word? OP is what gamers say. So, so anyway, this is our three round burst. So what am I going to do with it? Well, <clears throat> without altering what the, the, the sound I'm using, my sound source, I'm going to clip this. Now, if you don't get it exact, like if you get it a little bit before it's not the end of the world but you don't want to clip off any of that actual sound so <clears throat> and then I'm gonna highlight this all the way to the end well wow, that's a lot so our, our our actual sound effect is only 1.24 seconds so that's not very much and then we're going to pretend that we're saving this now if you select part of the sound file you need to choose export selected audio and then usually it's going to be C weapon name whatever the the name uh, name well 
I mean, it could be modified from that, right? But you're looking for the name of the file that's being used, referenced in the WPN file. Now, there's there's um, like t two basic naming schemes for select fire weapons. Select fire weapons are weapons that usually have a semi-auto firing mode and either either and or three round burst uh, and or full auto. So uh, that's select fire. So <clears throat> one of the schemes is S. It'll say S at the end of the file name before the dot wav the the wave extension s apparently stands for uh, single shot i guess <clears throat> or semi auto so you use that for uh, single shot sound effect files the next one is usually in this order but it may be out of order where you find it wherever you find it the next one is three that's for three round bursts so we would save our file as C underline weapon name three dot wave. You know what whatever is being referenced in the uh, weapon file, um, assuming we're not changing it. Now, because this is a mod, if you save this to your sound folder right here at the top your sound folder um, in your mod name folder in your mods folder right well then it's safe to save that file with the very same name that's being referenced in the WPN file um, because you're not overwriting the default sound file which is located somewhere else in the in the you know default file structure you're saving this file in the in the uh, folder hierarchy of your mod name folder so the the moment of overriding happens when you load the game and you go into the options menu and you activate your mod and then um, from there you go into a custom mission or training or a regular mission because now your mod is activated and and it's at that time that the game overwrites um, the original sound effect of this file name. And it doesn't really so much as probably overwrite it uh, as much as it uh, just chooses this version over the other version. So uh, of that particular sound file. So this is how we would save this three round burst. Now, if it was a full auto sound effect, the end letter would be B. And uh, I guess that stands for burst. <clears throat> what about the trailing sound? The trailing sound would be R. Now there's another scheme uh, that you'll also see these named as and usually that's one for a single shot I think it's L for a full auto burst I believe <clears throat> and then I think it's E which must be maybe end maybe one is a single shot L maybe stands for loop and then E maybe stands for ending of the of the uh, sound effect. <clears throat> so what are we talking about when we talk about E, the ending, or R, 
what I call the trailing sound. I don't know what, maybe R stands for reverberation. Um, so now I'll show you that. So how do we figure out how to make this? Well, we go to, once we've figured out the cyclic rate, as I've covered in the other video, but we'll figure out the cyclic rate right now, or, uh, or rather the, the amount of time between one round and the next in full auto, because that's not exactly the cyclic rate, which is the rounds per minute. So we come up here with 0 0.044. So, to find out where to begin the trailing sound, we measure from the very beginning of the last gunshot to 0 0.44, right there. And it doesn't matter if it's exact because um, these hundredths of a second, your ear is not even going to hear that. So, right there shut up right here uh, so this is where we would begin the trailing sound so just jump to right this point and then I highlight this and then I would say file again I've selected part of the audio so I would go to export selected audio and now our file would be C weapon name or whatever it is ref whatever file is referenced in the um, WPN file the weapon file C weapon name and then uh, R at the end or if it's the 1LE naming scheme, because this is the S3BR naming scheme for single shot, three round burst, burst and maybe reverberation, I don't know. Or if it's 1 for single shot, L for maybe loop, and E for ending. So depending on whether we're doing R or E, it doesn't really matter. Um, that's how we would name it. And what, and I'll sh and I'll explain what that's going to do. Um, so let me cancel this. So now we go back here. So we've done our three round burst file. We've done our trailing file. So now I know where this stops, stops right about there, and then I just go to the beginning, and and I'm not sure if the count matters. Um, I make it a habit of taking 10 shots in a full auto uh, loop, because that's that's just what was in the first one the first default loop that I looked at from the game so I assumed that it wanted 10 shots for some reason I'm not sure that it matters um, you, you may be able to make a loop out of a single shot uh, because what's going to happen is after the loop finish finishes playing it will then switch to the trailing sound and play the trailing sound so however long you hold down the fire button in full auto uh, on your mouse um, it's going to stop playing that loop sound effect as soon as you take your finger off of the mouse and then it's going to switch to the trailing sound and play the trailing sound so you may you may go Ba -ba 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 -ba, and then when you stop firing it'll go so you know it doesn't doesn't matter how long you fire in full auto except I think I've seen that if you fire 
maybe more than 50 rounds or it might have been more than a hundred rounds the the full auto sound, sound uh, the full auto loop stops playing uh, I've, I found that to be the case with the machine guns rather the the light machine guns or the belt fed machine guns like if I just sit there and burn through a hundred rounds uh, at some point it just gives up and it stops playing the loop sound effect and then it goes completely silent which sucks so be realistic fire your belt fed machine guns in bursts you know you don't want to overheat and melt the barrel so anyway so our f this particular full auto loop is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh that worked out nicely so our full auto burst is ten rounds and this is what it sounds like hard to hard to really tell what's going on right because and that's because it's 1500 rounds per minute which is ridiculously fast but if we were to loop this like um, I can do like this copy and then uh, first how would we save this well we could go to export again because we selected some now if the whole file was just this right and there was nothing afterwards and nothing before it well I could just say export as wave because I'm, I'm taking the whole thing but in this case I've selected audio so I'm saving the selection and then I would save it as C weapon name uh, B for burst or I believe it's L for loop um, depending on which naming scheme that particular gun is using um, so that would be that I would uh, I would then have my loop and then if I copy this and then I do this and then I've put my mark here and then I can go up to edit and paste but this is only to show you what um, the loop would sound like uh, because now we don't have 20 or 10 rounds we have 20 rounds and again we're starting at the very beginning of the first shot and then we're going to the end and this is what it sounds like So it's a, like an imperceptible uh, seam between the two 10 round bursts. So, so that would be you holding your mouse down for 20 rounds in the game. So, uh, okay, so what about our single shot sound effect? Well, say you only got a full auto burst sampling right you don't have a single shot sound effect um, and, and you want it to sound the same because if you get like full auto from one source and then a single shot sound effect from another source they may not sound the same you know like the environment they're recorded in is different the equipment they use to record it is different um, maybe the perspective that they're recording it from is different maybe the ammo they're using is different you know there's all kinds of different factors and uh that could come into play that would cause one sample to sound different from another and you don't want that abrupt change in the sound the uh, of the file of the sound effect to change from semi-auto to three round burst to full auto so then what you do is you just go to your first or your last rather uh, gunshot in the string and you go to the beginning of it where there's an abrupt increase in volume 
and then because that's what a gunshot is. It's an abrupt increase in volume and uh, and now you go here all the way to the end and there's there's your single shot sound effect. And it, it actually works better in game than it does in Audacity trying to uh Now <clears throat> what about the inverse? What if all you have is a single shot sound effect and you want to make a full auto burst out of it? So this would be the reverse of the technique I showed in the other video about how to find out what your uh, or how to set a cyclic rate on your gun, your modded gun in Rogue Spear. So this would be a case where you knew what the cyclic rate of the gun is because you read it off of Wikipedia or whatever, right? So then, <clears throat> let me see, um, so 1500 and then you would, let's see, I think divide that by 60. Is that how it works? No, that's not right. Okay, let me refresh my memory here. 1500 divided by 60 divided by 60. There it is. Yeah. So this would be, I would round up 0 0.42. So that gave us the time between uh, gunshots, 0 0.42. So <clears throat> this, is, this is trickier. So I'm going to copy this, copy, and I'm going to open up a new window. And no, I want to new there and then edit paste all right so there's there's our single shot sound effect and now gotta remember how I did this nope tracks add new mono track down here and I can edit, paste, and um, add new mono track, and edit, paste. Okay, so now I've got three. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Where's the... There. All right, so, but I need a little bit more detail, so I'm going to blow it up. And then I need to slide this over here so I can see all these. Okay, so... 0 0.42 is, as we see at the bottom, 0 0.042, so I, dro I dropped a 0 there, is right there. So, so I can take this, grab it here, and slide it this way to match up with that. I think that's lined up. Nope, that's not. There, I think that's lined up. Now, I'm going to do the same here. 0 0.042 Grab this one.
Okay, so now we've got three. And if I go back to the beginning of this file, I think it'll play all three. Yeah. So there's my three round burst. And you could keep doing that until you get, you know, ten, uh, ten rounds. If, if you want a loop of ten rounds in size. So you get like a little bit of, a, of an echoey sound because you're, you're duplicating, exactly duplicating, you know, the sound. Um, but it still sounds pretty damn good. So a better method would be if you had from the same sampling like the same source, you had three different single shots, then I would take those three different single shots and then make a three round burst out of those. One shot here, the second shot here, the third shot here. That way they'd sound different. You know, there would be a, a bit of difference there. And, uh, and also the trailing sounds would be slightly different, but then they would be merged at the end. So then, what are you, how are you going to save that? How are you going to merge those three tracks? Um, so then, you go to File, and uh, I think I think it's Export as Wave, and it and it doesn't immediately say anything. Um, I'm just going to call this Test. I think after you hit save then it says something. Yes. Warning, your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one mono file. That's exactly what I want. Thank you very much. So then I hit OK. And now if I go to my sound file, there's test wave. And what does it sound like through whatever this is, Windows Media Player. So the, the, the volume is kind of low, but there's my three round burst. All as one WAV file. So if you wanted a full auto sound, you just uh, increase the number of tracks. I don't know if there's a uh, like a maximum number of tracks you can have or not. <coughs> in Audacity. If there is, then what you would do is um, you could save your three round burst and then you could layer the three round burst three times and then add on a single shot sound effect at the end to make your ten rounds. Now that's assuming you even need a ten round you need, you need ten gunshots in a full auto burst sound file. I don't know that you do. I haven't even tried not using 10 rounds. Uh, I personally, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible to have a smaller burst file. Like, uh, you could probably use, um, like just three rounds or I think you could probably use one round to make a burst, but know that the loop is going to sound very repetitive if you do that. You know, it's gonna it's gonna it's it's gonna sound artificial. But I suspect it's very possible. <coughs> And it's probably a great way to um, save on uh, memory overhead, you know, so. But um, my, my own personal aim is to make something that sounds realistic, uh, not to save um, memory overhead because I've got plenty of memory in my system. I don't care. Uh, 
I don't mind, you know, having a nice fat mod that right now is pushing about 85 megabytes. And really, 80, 85 megabytes, that's nothing. It's only something when you're trying to upload it to ModDB and ModDB keeps canceling your upload. Then, you know, you can't even... Something's going on with my connection where, personally, I can't even upload to ModDB for a minute without it failing most of the time. So, I have, I have no problems with my upload speed. Um, it's it's ModDB that has a problem. ModDB doesn't have a resume button. Um, you know, lots of websites so many years back started adding resume buttons so that even if your upload stopped, you could just click resume and it would pick up uploading your file from where it left off. Um, so but they don't have that so it's a problem for me um, anyway 85 megs is not a lot of overhead um, to have a gaming experience that sounds realistic you know in comparison to the somewhat cartoony uh, sound effects of default uh, rogue spear um, now, mind you, back in the day, I mean, the, the sound effects sounded pretty damn great. Um, but this is 2022, so I'm not living with that anymore. Um, so there was something else I wanted to point out. Uh, right, so you can always get your, if you're trying to figure out how to set up your your loop um, you can always get your cyclic rate uh, from your WPN file you know if you're not getting it from some online source like Wikipedia mind you if you get it from Wikipedia the cyclic rate of your weapon and that's what you're using to construct a full auto loop you have to set your WPN file to that same, or I say you have to, I recommend that you do for the best quality. I recommend you set the cyclic rate right here in the WPN file to match what the online resource you're reading gave because that's what you're basing your sound file on. So, uh, We've covered single shot sound effects, we've covered three round burst, we've covered full auto loops. Um, oh, I, I did want to point out that uh, when you make a single shot sound effect right here, keep in mind that this is not as clean as a real single shot sampling uh, from an audio source because this portion right here is inheriting all of the trailing sound from all of these gunshots before it right um, so it may prevent this single shot from sounding as good as a real single shot sound sampling However, in this case, it, it sounds pretty good. So, um, most, you know, I don't, I don't think the majority of listeners are going to notice anything wrong with that. So, uh, I think I've, uh, I think I've covered everything for this. Um, so happy modding. I'd like to see more people uh, modding for Rogue Spear again. This game is so easy to mod. Um, I'm not sure if Rainbow Six One is as easy to mod. I never did mod that game because I, I mean, Rogue Spear was a step up in quality in so many ways. Uh, 
granted um what well, one thing i miss from rainbow six one is how the tangos would just kind of slowly walk around uh you don't see you don't see that very often in rogue spear that might be because i'm not as stealthy or i'm not stealthy enough to see the tangos doing that um i don't know it's just playing rainbow six one the embassy you know like you could be outside and you could hear the tangos just walking around inside and i just thought that was really cool um <clears throat> so yeah i think i've i've covered everything if you got any questions you could ask uh in the comments and i'll try to cover them uh in another video um uh i, I might as well cover it here because this is a, a small part really <coughs> um Oh, if you find that in game the your wet your gunshot sound effects aren't loud enough, um, like I said, you want you want the ex, uh, extremities of the amplitude in your sound effect to be almost to be touching or almost touching the top and bottom of your your sound file. Um, but you don't want them to exceed very much past the top and bottom because then you're going to lose detail in your sound file, right? But there is a way to increase the, the um, sound as it plays in game and that's through a file called uh, Sound Volume uh, TXT right here. And here, you you name your file, and then you set the the volume level of the file. Now, I believe that this is the most distant. Uh, this is how loud the sound effect will play at its most distant, and I believe this is like medium range, and I believe this is close range. Um, really pumping these numbers up it, it results in in my experience in, in very small increases in volume and I've it seems like they will cap out at a certain point because I've not been able to push some sound effects as loud as I want them to be so you would enter your file here you would enter the new uh, uh, numerical figures and then you know save this in your sound folder in your mod uh, name folder and that that will help you increase the volume of some of your sound effects um, you know when you when you've already done this you know made sure to and and how do we do that well like um, I've already highlighted this right so then I go up to effect and uh, volume and amplify and here audacity automatically detects that it can only amplify this uh, this portion of the sound file by 0 0.061 decibels because they're, they're, it's already practically touching the top and bottom in places even even just the briefest amount of time if it touches the top or bottom it doesn't want to increase the volume much more than that because it knows it's destroying detail in in the sound effect so 
sometimes you have to push it you have to you have to have um, push it to destroy some detail in order to get the volume that you need but I wouldn't go too far with it because you know then it's going to sound like garbage for another reason um, what about background noise um, so the way you do that is you highlight what you know to be background noise and in this case this is trailing sound so it's not background noise I don't want to get rid of trailing sound um, but let's assume this is background noise right like a plane flying overhead or um, I don't know like the maybe the camera itself hums or um, yeah, there's all kinds of background noise you'll find as you're trying to find uh, find audio sources to use that uh, it's really difficult to find good clean sounds but say this is background noise right you go up to effect noise removal and repair and you click uh, noise reduction and you click this button get noise profile so then it <coughs> it looks at the noise in this section and then it, it um, gets an idea of what kind of noise it needs to remove uh, and then once you click get noise profile this window will disappear so then you have to go back up here again to um, uh, well first then you want to highlight the noise that you want to get rid of and you can include your actual um, sound sound effects like the actual portion you want to keep because it's not going to harm that uh, too much um, you know it's it's like noise canceling or noise reduction in some of your telephony is that what they call it telephony apps or your your voice over IP apps you know you notice where you, someone sets their um, noise reduction really high then they get this weird compressed almost like an auto tuner sound to their voice well that's what's going to happen if you reduce the noise too much in your sound effect but anyway so I've highlighted where I want the noise removed I go up to effect and then uh, noise removal and repair go back to noise reduction and then I think by default this is set to 12 sometimes I'll reduce it to 6 I try to reduce this number of decibels as low as I can while still achieving the amount of noise background noise reduction that I want um, so to be on the safe side I'll I try not to set it higher than 11 because I found like 12 or higher really starts damaging the quality of the file now another way um, you can I'm not sure what residue does I usually use reduce and and I'm and I haven't really tinkered with these two settings much so I just don't know what they do so I don't mess with them but another way to um, get rid of background noise is you can actually highlight where the noise is and you can go to effect volume amplify and it will have its own opinion about how it should amplify the sound but you don't want to amplify it right so you take it down negative and you say negative 50 decibels you want to absolutely kill any of that sound in that segment and then I hit apply and it's gone it's uh, I'll play it for you it's there's nothing there now see it's completely silent so that's helpful when you get somebody talking when you don't want them to be talking which happens a lot with gun videos so then you take that portion of where they go hoo, 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 
and then you just effect volume amplify and you kill that crap and hit apply and then that erases that so but the the danger there is that a complete lack of sound could be as noticeable as um, as uh, sounds that you don't want um, if there's still a like a background noise or hum there and then all of a sudden it like goes completely dead quiet for a segment that could be just as noticeable so you have to exercise some caution uh, when it comes to nuking sounds that happen in your sound effect Um, so what, what are my credentials? I'm not a professional, uh, sound editor. Um, I, uh, I worked on the Rainbow Vox mod for Rogue Spear, um, back in the day, like around 2005 or six, maybe 2004, around there. And uh, and then after, um, well, that's right. I was still playing Rogue Spear, um, but I also uh, became a fan of Operation Flashpoint uh, Cold War Crisis um, even before it had that name. I think I think I became a fan. When it was still called Flashpoint, but uh, pretty soon it was called Operation Flashpoint when Co uh, Codemasters became the publisher. So I was a fan of the game even before the first public demo came out, and uh, and then I got a chance to actually um, help uh, rewrite the dialogue for the first public demo of Operation Flashpoint Cold War Crisis. And uh, I also um, objected to some of the gun sound effects that were being revealed in the unit videos uh, for Operation Flashpoint. Um, so I, excuse me, I volunteered to help uh, provide some better sound effects. So I bought a suite of sound effects from, I think it's called the Omni Zetropy Studio for the movie Apocalypse Now. And I, uh, and I had bought the, the suite with license, you know, it cost a couple hundred dollars, I think. And uh, at the time, I don't know what it costs now. And so I, I had the license to use these sound effects in uh, Operation Flashpoint. So I um, edited the sound effects and, the, and what, whatever we could use and then um, made sure that uh, Bohemia Interactive uh, got the sound files so that they could then use them in the game. Uh, and then um, PC Gamer USA uh, just criticized the sound effects and said they were bad. But uh, in my opinion that was partially because they were uh, in cahoots with Red Storm Entertainment with whom they had a an established relationship already and if you don't believe me consider the fact that uh, there was a, a map which was actually called the PC Gamer map for Rainbow Six One and it was a pretty good map it was like uh, four tall towers in the corner and then like um, over an overpass and uh, an underpass and 
anyway, you could ent enter the tower, so it was the, like, uh, the closest thing to a, like, a nice city street block. But, uh, anyway, so PC Gamer would give Red Storm Entertainment lots of praise, um, and then they would criticize uh, Operation Flashpoint for some of the same things that were uh, also in Red Storm Entertainment, but they wouldn't mention those things when they were reviewing Red Storm's products. So, and th and there was one one dude in particular who was guilty of all that. So, uh, anyway, so I I um, edited some sound effects for Operation Flashpoint Cold War Crisis, and. Um, then I worked on the uh, Rainbow Mox, uh, Rainbow Vox mod um, for Rogue Spear, um, but uh, engine limitations prevented me from realizing the the real object of that uh, project, which was to have a, a custom voice file set for every character uh, in the um, team roster. Uh, and I had, I think, recorded like four, four voice file sets. Um, one for uh, Polish female uh, Kazim Kazimiera Rakuzanka, one for the French male uh, Louis Loisel, um, one for the um, Italian from Milan, um, Antonio Maldini, and, and these were all real people, you know, th uh, from these places, and that I just pff, was, like, lucky to either know or meet by chance, and, um, and then there, I thought there was one more voice file set, but I can't recall what it was. But uh, I managed to recover two of those voice file sets from way back when. And I might be able to recover Antonio Maldini's um, in the future. But uh, so I had some experience working with sound editing and, and using just the most rudimentary of tools. And now I've got using Audacity and I love it. It's exactly what I need. And I'm so glad that someone recommended it to me. So, so I'm not a professional sound editor, um, but I've got some experience uh, making my resources work for me in order to achieve my aims. Um, so I'm happy to share the knowledge so that uh, if you want to... Uh, you, maybe you see a gun on YouTube and you say, wow, I'd really like to have that in Rogue Spear. Um, you know, I'm providing this knowledge that now you'll know how to uh, put that gun in Rogue Spear. Now, 3D modeling, making the 3D model for the gun and the graphical textures, uh, th especially 3D modeling, I could not advise you on how to do that because although I'm really great with spatial relationships, for some reason every time I go into a 3D modeling program, my brain just cannot work that out. Um, it doesn't matter how many hours I've spent in virtual 3D environments, when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to modeling things in uh, 3D environment, uh, my brain for some reason just doesn't seem to be able to get it, um, <laughs> which is which is sad. It's real sad because I'd done some drafting in middle school, and then to not be able to go into something like a CAD program and and Anyway, it's it's sad. It's, you're gonna make me cry. Um, 
and unfortunately I my knowledge of gra um, graphics editing is about the same as my knowledge of sound editing which means I can make things happen with the resources at my disposal but <laughs> I haven't had any formal training so the results uh, I'm limited by what I don't know and the results are probably not going to be as good as they could be so um, if I had had some formal training so um, I can't advise you on how to do that for your weapon mod but I can advise you on how to edit the WPN file and uh, get it working in the game and also how to edit the sounds um, which in my opinion are some of the most important aspects of modding a weapon in Rogue Spear because you don't get to see the 3D model in Rogue Spear or Rainbow Six One, you know, in your screen. You can see your teammates holding the weapon off to the side of you, but you can't see your own weapon in your hands. Um, so, you know, it's it's not the end of the world if you don't even have your weapon model correct because you don't get to see it. You know, whatever weapon you're choosing to use for the mission, um, well, unless you switch to third person, but if you do that, in my opinion, you're a heretic. I, I know it's an option in the game, but it's a first person tactical shooter, man. Don't, <laughs> you know, okay, maybe you're mirroring around a corner or something, and that's why you're in third person. But to me, it's it's heresy. I uh, I can't do it. It to me, it feels like cheating. I, I I don't even like using the heartbeat sensor in Rainbow Six One or Rogue Spear, because to me, that's like such science fiction. I mean, maybe it exists really, but to me, it's science fiction, and it just feels like cheating. And, and plus, I don't like to take my eyes off of. Um, my environment uh, you know switching back and forth between a map or using the mini map to uh, you know having to lean forward to the screen to use the mini map to see uh, colored circles that maybe will tell me that there's a tango somewhere um, for one I'm colorblind so I have problems with some of those colors um, I, I would rather just slice the pie and shoot whoever, whatever bad guys on the other side of the wall. Um, but, you know, when you're, when you're doing hostage rescue in some of these missions, I can understand the need maybe to know about, uh, what's in the room. Anyway, I'm ranting, so I'll stop here. Um. Like I said, if you've got any questions, you can leave them in the comments, and uh, and maybe I can answer them in another video at another time. <laughs>